Hi guys, welcome to Classic Rock and Country Music Facts and Trivia. Please subscribe if you have not yet. Thank you. Uh, today's video is, hey, hey, some trivia about the monkeys. Yes, folks, they were a real band. Couldn't, couldn't play in concert if you weren't a real band. Uh, anyway, this is by request, and it's been a while ago since they requested it. I'm sorry it took so long, but here it is. Only Peter Tork and Mickey Dolans appear in every episode of the TV show. Don't worry, the other two had good excuses. Davy Jones had to be written out of one episode so he could attend his sister's wedding. And Mike missed three shoots due to tonsillectomy. Uh, the birth of his son Jonathan and a family trip to Texas. Uh, Davy Jones was almost drafted by the Army. In 1967, Jones was classified 1A by the draft board and up for service. While seems odd, seeing how he was a native of England, uh, there was an article from a July 1967 issue of Teen Life magazine told it when Davy applied for an immigration visa to America, he has had to sign a form stating that he knew that after six months here, he would be eligible for the draft. Jones, having just wrapped the first season of The Monkees, fasted so he would come in frail and fail the physical. Paul Williams and Stephen Stills auditioned to be The Monkees. More than 400 young actors and musicians auditioned for the roles. Stephen Stills and Paul Williams were among those who did not make the cut, as were Danny Hutton of Three Dog Night and Harry Nielsen. Uh, the original idea was to cast an existing act, specifically The Love and Spoonful. Both Stills and Spoonful frontman John Sebastian Bristol had the idea of turning over their song publishing rights to the studio. Contrary to urban legend, Charles Manson did not audition. Jack Nicholson wrote their bonkers 1968 psychedelic movie. Uh, the movie was a colossal flop at the time, pocketing a mere, pocketing a mere $16,000 at the box office. In the five decades since, Head's dark, surprisingly political tone has made it a cult classic and one of the most embellic, uh, emblematic films of the late 1960s. Its nonlinear structure and surrealism would profoundly influence MTV's videos. Jack Nelson and director Bob Rafelson were the brains behind the postmodern hijinks. Nicholson purportedly hammered out the screenplay on acid. Hey, hey, we're the Fonzies. People say we Fonzie around. There is no bigger what if surrounding Happy Days and the potential casting of Arthur Fonzarelli. Uh, the creators were keen on Mickey Dolans, and even Henry Winkler thought his chances were slim when he spotted this adorable pop star at the audition. But it came down to inches, six of them. The lens was seen to be too tall, towering over his co-stars. Nesmith also auditioned and was considered too tall. The 5'6 Winkler fit the frame perfect. Pisces, Aquarius, Capricorn, and Jones LTD is one of the first albums to feature a Moog synthesizer. It says the Monkees were not cutting-edge musicians. Quartet hardly gets enough credit as an actual band. Dolan's owned one of the first 20 moves ever sold along with the universities of Wisconsin and North Carolina. The synthesizer can be heard on their 67 album. Michael Nesmith's mom invented correction fluid. Bet Nesmith Graham whipped up the first batch of liquid paper in her kitchen in 1951, originally calling the stuff the stakeout. Her correction fluid would be godsend for typists. The rival whiteout would come along in 66, just like the monkeys. David Bowie named himself after a knife because of Davy Jones. Bowie was born Robert uh, David Robert Jones and went by Davy Jones in his early formative rock and roll days. He changed his name to avoid confusion with the monkey star and picked Bowie based on a frontiersman's Jim Bowie and his knife. Gene Roddenberry based Pavel Chekhov on Davy Jones. After the first season of the greatest sci-fi show of all time, Roddenberry realized he needed a young mop-top character to lure more teenagers. Walter Koenig uh, was, said his iconic character was modeled after Davy Jones. The New Monkeys album was best-selling CD on Amazon. A Good Times was the first Monkeys recording in decades and saw Dolans, Nesmith, and Tor collaborating with musicians like Noel Gallagher of Oasis and Rivers Cuomo of Weezer. Uh, the greatest throwback album also included a posthumous uh, contribution from Jones on a Neil Diamond written tune, Love to Love. 
which was cut in 67 and originally intended for the headquarters album. Uh, to be honest, um, when they first got together, uh, Mike and Peter were the only two real musicians. Uh, Mickey was self-taught on drums while they was doing the show. Uh, I mean, I don't, I'm not sure Davey ever played anything except for you know percussion type thing. Uh, the tambourine and the maracas and stuff. Uh, your guess is as good as mine on that one. But yes, they were a band. Um, that's all I have for you. I hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe if you have not yet. Have a great day. God bless you. And I'll be praying for you.